Welcome back to Westwood Engineering. Today we're going to learn how to use FlashPrint to slice our models and make a 3D printed part. Let's get rolling. First thing we're looking for is the flash print icon. You'll find this over on the computer by the printers. You'll also find it on your laptops from the lab. I'd prefer you use the computer over by the printers to slice your models because that's set up with the latest and greatest for all the profiles. Go ahead and click flash print if it's not open. Flash print is the slicing software that comes with our flash forge printers. Uh, pretty decent printers. Uh, not real high-end, but they do work well for our academic purposes. So this is the screen that you'll be faced with when you initially open this up. very first thing you want to do is choose the correct printer. We've got two different types of printers over here. So under machine types, where my cursor is flashing, you're going to see a FlashForge Creator Max and a FlashForge Creator 2, or Creator Pro rather. Uh, you want to choose the Max if you're using one of the four Max printers we have, and the Pro if we're using one of the two Pro printers. I'm going to choose Creator Max. Next thing I need to do is to locate my file. Now I happen to have my file right here and you'll see that cup.stl that I just made. I'm going to go ahead and put that onto my platen. Now I can load it one of two ways. I'll show you the first way and then I'll delete it. I can simply drag it down and drop it. It may not drop exactly the correct way. Don't worry about that. So I can drop and drag. I'll delete this model off of the uh, printer. The second way I can do it is I can click the load button right up here. Clicking the load button opens up this window. Oh my goodness, that's a lot of stuff. And I'm going to navigate down to my C drive to Westwood Engineering. And I'm in second hour and I'm on my project 1.26 and there is my cup. I can select more than one file in this fashion. Open it, and it pops back out onto my plate. Now, a couple things we need to do here. First thing we need to do is we need to orient this thing to print. So I'm going to rotate it to start with. This is obviously a bad print profile, and what it's going to actually do is have to print a lot of support material to support this curve. I want to print so the flat side of my model is the flat side down. That's your obvious choice almost every time. So click on my part. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on this rotate button and it will pop out. You'll see that I've got some grab handles that I can use to rotate my part, but I prefer to just use the tab here. And I can now pop it around 90 degrees and you'll see it pop around. Now when that platen turns pink, that means I'm through the bottom of it. Now that's a bad thing if you print it that way, but we're going to fix it. So I can rotate it in the X axis, that's along the red arc. I can rotate it in the y-axis, that's going around the green arc, and then in the z-axis, that's rotating in the blue arc. I'll leave it like that. Close that window. Now my model's all set up to print, except it's beneath the surface of the print plate, as you can see right here when I zoom in. So let's fix that. Easiest way to fix that is to come up here to Edit and select Auto Layout All, or the shortcut Control L. If I have multiple models, this controls the spacing between models. I recommend you keep it somewhere between two and five millimeters. We only have one model on here, so there will be no spacing between our models. If you make this space very large, and you're doing multiple models on the same plate, you'll just spend a lot of dead time moving between print areas. So two millimeters, click OK. You'll see immediately that now the blue indicates that my model's on the plate. There it is sitting ready to print. Now I want to be sure I'm inside the print volume. That auto layout all will also put it inside the plate, or inside of the print volume. So I'm going to intentionally move this and drag it outside. You'll notice how it turns red if I go out the back, red if I go out the sides, red if I go out the front. Again, edit, auto layout all puts it back into the, into the uh, print volume. Well, now I'm pretty well ready to go, but notice I've got this big old handle overhanging here. That's problematic and I'm gonna need some supports. So I'm gonna come right over here and click on the support button where my cursor is flashing. Supports just give some sacrificial material for the 3D printer to print your part onto as it has a large overhang. So I'll click on supports and I can click on support options. 
My preferred support options are linear. 1.5 millimeters works pretty good. And now I'm going to select OK. When I do that, I can either add them manually, and I'll show you an example of I can just come right in here and drag a support in. There's a green support. So I just clicked and put one in, put two in. Well, that's pretty darn monotonous. I'm just going to go auto supports. So I'm going to delete the current supports and go auto supports. There you go. I've just built a bunch of supports. Now you're going to notice something here. I originally had supports underneath here, but the slicing software seems to think I don't need them. And the reason is because the slope of the handle is shallow. So it should print into air. Now I'm going to back that up with a little bit of insurance here and I'm going to print some, I'm going to put some very small supports along here just to be sure my model doesn't fail. And I'll put one more down here. Now I can rotate my model around and what I'm doing to rotate my model around is I'm holding down my, my uh, right, or sorry, my, yeah, my right mouse button. I had to think about that for a second. And I can add more supports over on this side. And that's enough supports. All right, that's not going to fail there. Now my model's ready to go. I can go back, and now I'm just going to select print. Now when you select print, I'm going to tell you for these first few models, what I want you to do is to go ahead and use the Creator Max PLA default profile. Don't mess with any of this. It will work for you for these models. Select OK. You're going to need to save this onto an SD card to put into the printer. Put the SD card into the SD slot. For this case, I'm going to print it back onto my drive. Just click Save. You'll see it go through in the print progress bar down here. We'll progress through. And then I'm going to get basically a preview of what my print looks like. So I'm going to rotate this around. There's a preview of my print and the actual plastic that should be extruded out. I can click down through the layers over here on the left hand side and look at my model. I have chosen about a 15% infill on this model and two shell layers. That's all there is to it, to 3D printing. Uh, we'll learn in class a little bit more about the process of 3D printing, but this is how we slice a model. At this point, take the SD card over, put it in the printer, and select your file to print. Thanks for watching. Thank you.